Hi everyone, I just wanted to show you as quickly as I can uh, my new acquisition thanks to Sacred Seed, a lovely YouTube enabler. So it's my um, alchemical tarot that I have here that I'm going to show you a bit later. But first I want to start with the book by Robert M. Place. I like this book a lot better than I thought, along with the tarot, and I'm going to show you later why I like the card so much. The book has about 240-something pages. It's a bit glossy, but not too much. It's pretty heavy. Uh, so you would know uh, if you ordered from um, his website that the shipping is pretty much as as much as the tarot costs as well as much as the tarot deck costs so it's pretty expensive i'm i'm in canada i'm not in the us so that makes things a bit trickier i wanted to order this deck uh, a couple years ago and i backed out of it because of the cost of the shipping but anyways <clears throat> uh, here it is I actually took some notes so that I can, because I know Sacred Seed did a walkthrough of the deck. Uh, she did talk a little bit about the book as well, but I, f I find it so informative uh, without being overwhelming that I think it deserves a, a bit more attention. So the book starts with the history of alchemy, and it's, it's very... It's very good for someone that doesn't really know uh, what the uh, alchemical tarot is based on and what alchemy really is because what we refer to as alchemy nowadays is more from a metaphorical standpoint than a literal one and back in the day uh, that was not the case. Um, alchemists had um, laboratories and they did um, experiments with metals, with chemical substances, etc. Um, so, Mr. Play starts his introduction with how he found tarot, or tarot found him, and it started with a dream, and then a friend of his um, gave him a tarot deck, and that's how his journey with tarot began. Um, the history of alchemy, and he gives a very brief and, and simple definition of alchemy being the ancient ancestor of modern medicine, chemistry, physics, death psychology, and occultism. So it's, it's very hard to define alchemy um, since it's such an old um, process, such an old concept that has evolved over time. And even the author him, himself explains in the book that there were numerous uh, misconceptions and misunderstandings even at the time that alchemy was in full bloom because each author had a certain understanding and a certain belief regarding the symbols and therefore they used it differently. So I think we can take that and apply it even now with our tarot practice. You know, you can read books. Um, each author and each deck creator will, ha will have its own interpretation of, of the symbols, but then you have to go on and, and see what, what suits you and what, what works best for you. I like the fact that it even goes into explaining um, the um, etymology of the word gibberish. And it says here, the word gibberish originally referred to texts written by the medieval Arabic alchemist Jabir, known in Latin as gibber. This fact confirms that throughout history, people have found alchemy a daunting and confusing subject, and this impression was not unfounded. Every alchemist explained his or her work in personal terms and symbols that were derived from unique visions. Um, he goes on to talking about the myth of Osiris and how um, alchemy influenced um, ancient Egypt. Um, talks about Thoth and how Thoth was uh, assimilated in Greek mythology, in the Greek pantheon, as Hermes, but the people wanted to make the difference between the Egyptian Hermes and the Greek one, so they called 
thought the Hermes tri Trimagistus, which means uh, great, great, greatest God. So it gives you a bit of history, and there's a lot of pictures. Uh, it talks about the um, hermetic concepts, which I find very interesting. Um, the first one is the world as a living being. The second one is the mind and physical real reality that are connected. Three is the value of imagination. Four, the idea of correspondence. That there is more than a simple connection between celestial and terrestrial objects or the macrocosm and microcosm. As stated, as above, so below. The belief in transmutation, which is just growing and changing and the perennial philosophy, the belief that all cultures and religions share common traits or patterns. And if you look at different pantheons and different cultures, different religions throughout the world, you'd see so many similarities, right? Uh, spiritual truth is gained through transmission or initiation. And it goes on to, to say about her hermetics and hermeticism, how they believe that um, alchemy and finding the philosopher's stone is not only based on science, which is very important, but also on, on imagination, um, which is one of the bases for, for manifestation. Um, it goes on to describe the Renaissance period. It goes to Jung and um, the psychological alchemy. So if you're interested in archetypes, he goes a little bit into that as well, not too much. Uh, but you can see in a few pages how alchemy has evolved, declined, and then um, revived, was revived again. It goes on to basic concepts of the alchemy. Um, he talks about Rider Ware Smith as well, and Marseille Dex, and, and also how um, <clears throat> occult Dex came to be. And I like the fact that he talks about the high priestess, for example, that was known as the Papessa in the Marseille deck. Let me just find the page. Maybe I will find it at some point, page 153. Um, because I understand that many of us are fascinated and interested in the occult symbolism, um, in the esoteric approach to tarot, but at the same time, we have to be aware of the fact that what we attribute to tarot nowadays, or at least in modern era, is not the same as what it was <clears throat> a few hundred years ago. So as we would say in, in psychiatry, you just need to situate your, your, um, your subject in a certain context, right? So the high priestess were, were origin, was originally called the papess. So the first author to call the papess the high priest was Cour de Jabalan Imam Primitif. So he was the first one that thought that um, the high, the papess um, stands for more than, than just uh, what was originally thought. And that is because In the 15th century, to depict ancient figures in contemporary dress, it was customed. So it is possible that the papess represents an ancient pagan high priestess, as the occultist suggested. I, for one, like to keep things simple and keep things as they are and meant to be at that particular historical point in time. So if the Marseille decks or even... Um, even the older decks, the few older decks than the Marseille that we know nowadays uh, intended for the symbols to be um, according to their historical context at the time. Then when we come in the early 1900s or in the late 1700s, for example, and we start attributing um, occult symbolism, then we, we just impose 
our view of things. And of course, tarot, I see tarot as an open book and a tool that can be used in any ways by, by anyone, pretty much. But I think it's good to keep in mind that more doesn't necessarily uh, mean better. So yeah, it goes into the Major Arcana, and every Major Arcana card has about a page, two pages with with um, pictures as well. I'm sorry if I can't. My setup here is a bit wonky. I don't think you can see it properly. Yeah, so you have the depiction of the of each card here. When you go into the minors, uh, there's a lot less. And he calls them the cards of the four elements, not the minor arcana. So you have about half a page, more for aces, but for the rest of the minors, just about half a page. And it doesn't go um, into explaining why he used certain symbols. He does to a certain extent. Um, it doesn't go very much into alchemical symbols, which, which I think is fine. And if you want to know more about that, please go check out Sacred Seeds channel. Um, overall, I think it's a great book, um, and as the author himself says at the end, once <clears throat> you start doing readings, just forget everything you read, put the books aside, and just read what the cards are telling you. I'm glad that he uses um, what people have come to, <clears throat> to name the open reading, um, just looking at the position of the cards and how they relate to each other, how their um, legs are, if they're apart, if they're together, which card looks where, and so on and so forth. This is how I've been reading tarot since I've started it for, for years now. Um, and I think, I think it just makes sense. It makes sense to me. Um, I also recommend um, Enrique Enriquez and his documentary, Tarology. Uh, for people that want to keep tarot simple or start simple. So this is the book. I think he has some spreads or three card spreads. But generally, he likes to keep things simple, and I really, really appreciate that. Uh, before Warren, there is nudity in this deck. Um, so we're gonna, going to start <laughs> with that, with the starter not in order. And I'm, I don't think I'm going to go through the whole deck. I don't want this to be a very long video. I've already talked a lot. Uh, here we have the mermaid star with the blood and, and the milk coming out of her breasts. Um, red symbolizing masculine, white feminine. Uh, red is also for suffering or passion. Um, white for nurturing. Plenty of symbolism to go around, but as you will see throughout the deck, it's very easy once you sit with the cards a little bit and start doing readings. It's very, even if you're used to just the Rider Waits um, deck or type types of decks, um, it's very easy to recognize the um, the symbolism. And I thought when I initially saw the images, I thought that because the lines are so clean and clear and the drawings are very simple and the faces are, you know, very chiseled, I thought that it will give it a colder feel, but it actually doesn't. I love the colors. I love the greens. It's my favorite color. Um, and it actually reads very, very well. And it has a warm has a warm energy. It's the Emperor. You have enough in his book to to get you going. Um, I wouldn't call it a beginner's book. Uh, at least if you're looking for something um, on how to learn how to read the tarot, but if you if you are adventurous and you do want to let your um, imagination flow, then just pick up this deck 
and start reading with it. If you want to get this deck as a study, that is uh, fantastic as well. What I mean just as the box says, and I didn't bring it, um, it can be used f for um, by readers of, of many levels from beginners to, to advanced. Beautiful. So again, I'm not going to go too deep into the symbolism because as you can see, there's an abundance, abundance of that. Um, let's just go through this. And... Um, Robert Aaron Place is working on a new tarot deck with Rachel Pollack right now. I think it's called the Raziel Tarot, so please go check out his website. He has a lot of other information as well. He has a newsletter, um, and I like his writing style. So yeah, let's end up with the nude close-up. <laughs> okay, let's end up with the kids here. Thank you very much for watching. Um, Please go check out uh, Sacred Seeds channel and Robert M. Place's uh, website. Take care.